5.30 having arrived, we're going to start the meeting tonight with Town of Deerfield Notice of a Public Hearing. I'm going to ask Fred McGarry to read the notice. Uh, notice is hereby given of a public hearing to obtain input regarding the proposed installation of a gravel pad at the gazebo field for the purpose of putting in a seasonal ice rink. This hearing shall be held for the purpose of, of providing an opportunity for the public to offer comment on the proposed project. The Board of Selectmen will hold the public hearing on Monday, October 4th, 2021 at 5.30 p.m. The hearing shall be held in the downstairs conference room of the George B. White Building at 8 Raymond Road, Deerfield. Thank you, Fred. I will declare the hearing open and anybody from the public would like to speak. Do you want to give an overview, Jeff? Yeah, good evening, Jeff Shute, um, part, um, Parks and Rec Commission member. Um, we went over this a couple weeks ago with you guys. I gave you a plan. Basically, what we're looking at doing is um, building the uh, temporary seasonal ice rink at the gazebo field. Um, last year, we had it over at Hartford Brook, and the maintenance of it was, was difficult with lack of water and getting there and... and we believe that being at the gazebo area would be a lot more convenient for more people and we could um, possibly use the water from either the fire department or the highway shed. Um, what we need to do is get a level area, which doesn't exist there. Um, so we're looking at creating an area roughly 100 by 100 feet. Uh, the rink we have is 44 by 88, so we basically need 50 by 100 for the rink um, with an overflow. And we've also come into um, another rink that's 30 by 60-ish um, that we could either set up separate second next to it. Um, we could add to this one. The, the, the rink is expandable, but again, we'd be limited to the size of the flat area. Um, we found out last year at Hartford Brook that even a, a difference of an inch or two over 88 feet is a lot of water um, to level out the rink. So that's why we're really would like to get a level area. Um, the proposal when I was here before was to, to strip the low mountain, do a gravel pad. Um, I did hear from Andy that he was concerned with, and supposedly people have talked to him about losing the green area there. So another thought would be um, this fall, we could strip it down, level it, and then in the spring, we could put the loam back on it, reseed it and then we would have our grass back and we could build on this on the grass flat area in the future the key is to get a flat area and we can't do that without stripping in and regrading so um like i said i would be in I, I would be i haven't really run this by the commission we meet wednesday night but um thinking about it and talking to some people in town i think we can strip the loam that's there in the grass, um, put it aside for this season, put our rink on something substantial and flat, and then come back in the spring, it'll be reseeded. It should be fine to build the rink back on in the fall of next year. Well said. Anybody from the town would like to speak? Mr. Rhodes? <laughs> I'm being told to come I'll share. over here to I'll share. share the microphone. Carol Rhodes, Church Street. The only concerns I've heard when I've heard this discussed is the idea that there be a, a rink uh, sort of situated permanently in the middle of the green area, which is it's not permanent. But, but nobody's it. seen any map, so so uh, plans. So that was the concern that I heard. No map. No no plans had been seen. And so people didn't sort of have an idea of how this would actually play out for the only green area that the town really has. And you, you know that. So mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't know how this addresses that. I assume it does, but I don't know how. It's, it, we, take, we put it up in the fall and we, it's, per, it's temporary. Yeah. And we put it, in a, put it up in November and take it down in April. Better use of the land. Yeah. Multi, yep. yeah. Thank you. 
And it doesn't kill the grass. Once you seed it, you said you'd put more seed there, grass, after. When we put it on Hartford Brook, it didn't do any real damage there. Um, so, I, But my concern is if we tried to strip it, make it level this year, reseed it this year, it won't work. Mm, right. You're playing you know, in the late. mud in the spring. Right. Right. So I'd, I'd prefer to wait till spring, reseed it. Hopefully we can get somebody to hydro seed it so it will catch really quick. And it should be in good shape for old home day in August. And It would be only temporary then. Yeah. The, we wouldn't do this every year. It would be a, a flat green area that would, you know, we'd be using it every year, but we wouldn't strip it and do that every year. Did you consider out here? Oh. Oh. The basketball court? Uh, yeah, over here? No. I, I think I need a flat area, and I don't think that's very flat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Somebody did mention this weekend, I was talking to somebody at the fair, and they said, how about the, the rink, the new rink at the fair, the uh, riding rink? But again, it's accessibility and water, and you know we had to plow the parking lot at Hartford Brook to keep it open. We wouldn't have to plow anything over at the gazebo. We could use it for. Mm -hmm. it, it's a multi-purpose space. Mm -hmm. Right, but you just need to do this leveling before you can do anything, and then go forward from there with the reseed in the spring. Yeah. Once and as long as it takes, it's done. Next year, just set up the rink. Right. Fred. I like the idea of uh, eliminating the gravel and, and putting, uh, replacing the loam. That, uh, I've, had, I've had heard some uh, concerns as well with regard to eliminating the uh, eliminating that green space. So I think it's a good good change in good change in plans, Jeff. Anybody else from the town? We do have one letter from Danny Gregg supporting moving it, but she would like to see the, basically what Jeff just said, not have it regrow. But that'll be on file here. If there's nothing else from the board, I'll close the public hearing. Why don't we take it up next week and vote on it? Sure. Hopefully we'll have a full board. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jeff. All right, thank you. Does that work all right for you one week? We're getting close to November. The sooner the better, because i got to get people lined up to do the work. So, Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd, if you want a full board, that's what you got to do. So, Thank you. Yep. We'll call the Mario Sleckman board meeting of <clears throat> October 4th together. Start off with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kelly Roberts, you're on regarding deeding. We all have a page in our file here that's right to inter with your agenda. Oh, was Kelly doing yeah, that? that one? <laughs> yeah. Kelly's talking deeding. about the deeding, oh, the which deeding? would be your yeah. black folder she handed you. Oh, okay, there it is. Thanks, Kelly. You're welcome. So I gave everyone a quick reference report on deeding, and I've given um, John Harrington a binder with all the backup um, needed for deeding. And the notice of deed was sent out, and the deed date is November 1st. We can't um, vary from that date because that notice has already gone out. So what I have for the board is the deed list um, and just a couple comments on the deed list and I'll refer by map and lot. Um, there are a couple you'll notice. Um, 411 
dash 45 dash 13 that's probably going to be a housekeeping abatement issue um, Evan from avatar is looking at that and then um, the 406 dash 36 saddleback mountain one um, that is being investigated by avatar as well and may result in abatement so that might come off the list and the bottom two um, were just paid today so those are gone both both okay we got one one stick of both are paid. yeah i didn't want to over kill the stamping so <laughs> um so i you have the list you also have an updated um payment plan tracker that i keep and you can take a look at that it looks like people are doing pretty good um then you can go through the um, notices if you like um, i've provided john in that binder with the original deed waivers um, and i just ask that the board um, you know review review the list um, and have those waivers signed by latest your 1025 meeting um, so that I can um, so we don't miss that November 1st d deadline that's the last meeting before that I believe should not be a problem and that's really all I have do you have any questions So it looks like we're a lot smaller list than years past, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, we're doing really good with collections. Our first half, if we look at um, collection as a whole, our first half bill went really smoothly. We collected a good portion of that. Um, next, if we follow the line, um, we did leaning. Leaning um, was fairly straightforward this year, pretty easy. Um, numbers are down um, historically maybe just a little up from last year and then um, so the lien is all set and then I move to deeding um, November 1st we'll wrap up the deeding and then right after November 1st I hope sometime this month the board gets the tax rate set um, actually that's my question for the board do you have an update on the tax rate no okay um, I know that the school had got a um, extension on one of their forms so what we need or what we should try to do is to have a second half tax bill due with, within this calendar year and we've been on track so far um, we can only do the best we can depending on the other players in the game um, but I just want to remind that when we have a, a tax bill due in the current year um, and if we're still in a pandemic and we're searching for grant funds or um, other funds, a lot of those forms are looking for financial snapshots as a 1231. So when we have due dates into the next calendar year, it kind of skews our numbers. Um, so we want to look as good as we possibly can. Is there a reason why we wouldn't do this next week? Is it too soon? Um, I would, what I would suggest is um, one, sit, making sure assessing has all the data input. Two, calling um, our municipal advisor at DRA. And then we're, I think we're really just waiting on, we need to, um, have, we need get, we can check the portal to see if the school forms are uploaded but as soon as all the forms are uploaded it should be um, priority to get the tax rate set so we can get those tax bills out and and just to um, as you guys know I usually since I've been tax collector I've been utilizing a um, mailing service for my tax bills it works wonderful for first billing yeah it's really not an issue but I've since I've been collector I've noticed that second bill is continually into the next um, levy year and so 
what I'm planning on doing until all parties can kind of get back on track is I'm not going to utilize the mailing service for this second half tax bill. I'm going to print it in-house and we're going to stuff it in-house. Um, when you use the mailing service, it takes them a while to build that bill. It takes them a week or two to get the data ready for them to print and mail. We don't have that time and we haven't had that time. So until we're back on track, I'm going to do the second bill manually. Um, it's, it'll be more in postage, but we'll hopefully be in that this calendar year for our due date. Wonderful. Good. So I've got down the 18th and the 25th, which um, if you can get it on the 18th, woohoo, that's what you want to try for. The well, 25th would try be. It, John, if worse, then we can put it to the 25th if you keep track of mm -hmm. it. Why don't we try that if okay. it's good with everybody? I appreciate that. It gives us two full weeks. Yep. And um, <clears throat> next week, uh, just on a fun side note, I Monday is Columbus Day, so town offices are closed. Tuesday through Friday, I will be um, with the Tax Collectors Association at the conference, um, and I'll be teaching part of the educational portion, and I'll also be currently, right now, I'm the second vice president. I'll be sworn in as the first vice president, and then next year, I'll be signed it, uh, sworn as, as the president. So, whoop, whoop. Nice. Congratulations. <laughs> So I'm really excited about next week. So I won't be around, but I'm I'm working. I promise. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. I have Go ahead, question. Fred. Uh, if you have your folder there in front of you. Yep. Uh, map uh, 208, lot uh, 25, it shows uh, zero acres of land. <laughs> that is a mobile home. Um, the owner is deceased. Um, and what typically happens is, what I've observed is, the family member living there will pay at the last, will pay what they have to pay at the last minute. Okay. Thank you. I'll set Fred. Welcome. Yep. Thanks, Kel. Good night. Thank you, Kel. Ray, you're on. Hello, everyone. Well, I'm here um, tonight to uh, present um, some bills, some bids that I got. Um, the GBW roof that is above us, um, that's the only part of the roof that since I've been here we haven't touched. And it started leaking pretty good. And in the EOC room up here where the computers are, it was leaking all over the computers. Right. And uh, so John and Steve and myself, we've got all the computers and stuff pulled out away from that corner so that they don't get wet. And uh, we went up on the roof to look at the roof. Um, the roof is still in fairly good shape. It's a Carlisle rubber roof. And, uh, but some of the seams are starting to lift. And there's a few pinholes all the way around the edge where um, cement blocks are starting to crumble. That's, there's blocks up there for the antennas and they've been there so long they're actually disintegrating and it's going all over the roof and with the ice and the cold and the heat they're moving around they've got some small pinholes in it so it's leaking there and then back when this was built in the uh, late 50s um, they had ventilation systems up on that roof and there's two boxes of ventilation with fans in them and they had trap doors that kept opening and closing as the fans were being run um, they've been up there so long that the fan motors does not turn and um, the flaps that open and close there used to be a bar on them. the bars are gone completely and so the flaps just open and close with the wind and when I went up there there was three or four of them that was wide open so it was open to the air and when the rain gets raining real hard it comes down those chutes um, so I uh, called four different roofing companies to come down and take a look to see what it would take to fix that and see if the roof is savable. And uh, they all kind of agreed. I got, uh, I got two bids here um, out of the four people that showed up. And uh, the other two, for some reason, just didn't give me a bid. Um, 
and I've called them back and yep, I'll get it back to you, but I, I haven't heard from them. So I had, uh, I got Melanson roof, Skyline roof that did give me a bid and then uh, Therian roof out of Manchester and um, <clears throat> I roof. Um, I called them as well and those two didn't give me a bid. But basically what we're trying to do is probably take those two ventilation boxes off the roof and then they were gonna fill it in and repatch that with rubber so that that's not a problem anymore because they're not usable anyway. And that would create that problem gone. And then they'll reseam all the seams and re-glue them because they all agree that the roof is still in fairly good shape and that if we do this, we could probably get six to seven more years out of that roof. Mm -hmm. um, so rather than spend $40,000, I figured maybe we could uh, do a patch job and get some more life out of that roof. So for the minutes, it's, it's 3900 for Skyline? Correct. And what is it? There's two prices on the Lanson. Uh, there's two prices for Skyline as well. Right, um, that, that's, that was an easy one to add. Next. Yeah, yeah. And I um, kind of did it the same way with him. So the overlay of the seams um, with a five inch wide EPDM flashing as required would have been $6,800 if we do the seams. If he just does the patches and gets rid of the two fans and patches that, it's $4,500. That's right. So 11,300 versus 3,900. Correct. So it did. Basically the other ones came out, but uh, they didn't really seem that interested in doing it. Therefore I didn't get a bid from them. Well, it's that time of year too. Yeah. It's getting late in the season, so um, I figured that if I uh, presented this to you guys, that we could make a decision on what you wanted to do. Where would we take this out of, John, the 3900 The building trust fund. So we do have it. Yes. So the, uh, the one from Melanson had uh, overlay the field seams of the roof with uh, five inch wide EPDM flashing. Right. But the uh, Skyline doesn't provide, doesn't provide that, correct? They're, they're gonna take the existing steams, seams, reheat them and then re-glue them. Okay. Instead of putting brand new. Yeah. Uh, Melanson didn't wanna do that. They want brand new seams. Okay. So what does it take to disconnect the electricity up there? says we're going to do that. Yeah, I looked at that and uh, in John's office behind his door is a panel and the roof um, outlets are, are on that. So we shut that off already. Yeah. And Rick said that if we go ahead with this, he would disconnect them. Okay. Do you want a, uh, a motion, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Make a motion to uh, award the contract for the uh, Repairing the roof to Skyline Roofing in the pr price of uh, $3,900. Second. Second by Cindy. <coughs> Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, John. And that motion includes uh, to pay it out of the building emergency oh, yes, trust fund. Right. Correct. Thank you. And then the. Um, Central Fire Station. Um, I got a call um, from Matt, and he wanted me to go over look. He said that the uh, the back storage room in the building is, was showing some uh, signs of the whole ceiling being wet again. So I went over and took a look at that, and it was it, it poured in there. So we ripped the ceiling apart to see what was going on up above, and. Uh, all the metal where the metal roof used to be, which is under that platform on the back that comes out on the second floor on the back of the building, and then comes down the, lat, the stairway to the back parking lot. Um, they didn't lift that off in there and tear it apart to get that metal roof in that was underneath there. So it was left figuring that the metal roof wasn't leaking. Apparently the metal roof is leaking. Right. So when we looked up through there, you could see holes right outside. So 
we took some uh, spray and we the foam filled window spray and we put them in the hole temporarily uh, put some plastic over the top of it and uh, I got a bid from Charlie Wheeler um, on basically what it would cost to tear that whole ramp apart tear the metal roofing off and match the existing roof all the way across so that it's not metal roofing in, on there anymore and then reattach it and then fix the inside ceiling of course mm -hmm. so that one is the next one that you got from Charlie Wheeler I got yep. uh, I called a couple other people he's the only one I've gotten so far to come out and uh, we shouldn't be waiting if we know it's leaking yeah right I agree we have a mold issue yeah what so was this price 2675 2675 yeah. yeah yeah that needs that room's a mess they cut out all the yeah molds. yeah you can see if you look up in this and you see the foam that we put in the holes for yeah. now <laughs> but now that's going to take down that whole stairway back there and he's going to rebuild that stairway is that what he's doing he's going to take it all apart because it's in the way mm. and then reattach it after reattach. because we have to have it for yep. occupancy upstairs mm. and it's brand new <laughs> just about okay i'll uh i'll make a motion to uh repair the back roof of the central fire station uh, and to award the uh, work to, is it Charlie Wheeler? Yes. Charlie Wheeler, yeah. He uh, lives in town. In the amount of $2,675, and funding for that would come from? The Building Emergency Trust Fund. Building Emergency Trust Fund. Second. Second by Cindy. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous, John. Okay. Thank you, Ray, for doing and all that. It's the last thing I have for you tonight is the library parking lot um, I don't know if you've noticed it and Cindy you've probably noticed it but next to the, where they park um, by the wall by the side of the between the fire station and the library um, it's sunk way down and they've marked it with white paint so you can see it but when cars pull in there they're actually bottoming bottom and out because the hole is that deep so um, I think it needs to be permanently fixed at some point um, not necessarily right now because it's late in the year um, right now probably if you got some coal patch in there for the winter just to level that off it would probably be good but in the spring it probably needs to be recut taken out and, and it's only as good as its base and the foundation underneath there is all sandy um, there's not any real good gravel under there um, so I guess from what I was told Mark Young had put a, uh, a catch basin at the end of the parking lot and they were supposed to take all the water, but it's sunk so deep that the water can't get to the catch basin. So oh boy. it needs to be built up uh, and resurfaced. So I don't know if it's something you want to put out to bid or if it's something that we can get our highway department to do, but it definitely needs to be looked at. Can you check with Matt? He does the coal patching. He yep. does a great job on the roads. Yep. I think that would probably be the best bet is to get, get it patched, at least for the winter because we're close. And the hot top plant's going to be shutting down pretty soon anyway right. so that yeah and that's just to repair it that's not that's just to, to rip anything it. up yeah. okay yeah if you could check into that with the crew that'd be great ray okay i will do that thank you thank you anything else ray that's it thanks thank for all you. you do thank you get right into the budget review yep about I do this under new business yes okay don't let us forget Fred okay
All right, our first one is town administration, page two. Select board. Budget of $254,028. <clears throat> um, looking at the budget, you can see the major areas of increase uh, would be the full-time employee line, uh, the part-time employee line that's basically due to the COLAs that the board has approved over the past uh, four years and the budget has not kept up with it. Our auditing services uh, with the new vendor, uh, that is up $1,700, that's by contract. Uh, the maintenance for our vendors, that's basically our uh, copier service. Um, some of our Muni smart modules, which is our accounting system, uh, occupies that increase and our postage, we, which has to offset our newsletter expenditures that we send out uh, at the beginning of each year. Mm -hmm. Our telephone cost is slightly down, but uh, not remarkably. Yeah. What would come under vendors, John? Maintenance and vendors? Yes. That, that's our Harris computer system module for the accounting and our sharp copier. Copy. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. Any questions from the board? Nope. Need a motion. Uh, make a motion to uh, approve the, uh, what is it, town, town administration for 254028. Second. Second by Cindy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous, John. Page 11. Property reevaluation. That budget is actually down uh, $6,284 from uh, our current year. That's made up in the part-time employee line and our contract appraiser. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the revaluation of property for $86,031. A second. Second by Cindy. Is this part of the total rev where we had that a couple years ago? This is a yearly update. Is that what? This is basically our assessing department, and that a contract appraiser is basically our maintenance fee with Avatar. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous? Aye. This doesn't have a detail line, a t detail page. Which one, Cindy? Assessing? It doesn't have a detail. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there, yeah it should Sorry. be in there. Yep. Next is number 13, legal. The select board budget of 44000 We'll make a motion to approve the legal budget for $44,000. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous.
personnel and administration on page 15. I'm going to ask the board to table that just yet. This has not been uh, finally updated by the finance director. Okay. Come back to we'll that. Come back to that. Yep. Andy's not here to talk about insurance number 26. And I do not have updated figures for the board on that either, so I'd like to table that. How about VZ Park on 69? We do have the VZ Park director with us, so we can take that one. Fire away, Travis. All right, good evening. So we'll start, uh, pr proposed budget is essentially what we've been submitting for the last few years with a, a minor change. Um, we've actually dropped the personnel um, by $760. And funny enough, we just kind of <coughs> thought that it looked better as 39,000 something than 40,000 something. We kind of followed that Walmart pricing model <laughs> so I don't know what the town budget looks like but maybe if we just make it nine 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 seven or something it might pass Close, <laughs> yeah, so, um, so essentially the increase that we're looking for is again primarily with the park attendant um, and then uh, anything that's associated with the extra employees such as uh, <clears throat> um, uniforms we're looking for another $400 in the uniform line. Um, and then uh, everything else is pretty much the same except the $500 increase in the reimbursement line for our swim instructors and lifeguards. Um, so that's pretty much all the same. But I would like to touch on, um, you might be aware, we've, we went over this year. Um, we went over budget, bottom line. Uh, by a couple few thousand um, we did we did staff a park attendant this year and we had a park attendant there the entire season um, went very well as far as that goes but that's an increase of six to just over six thousand dollars for the season um, just to have the park attendant there at the gate uh, we also had an abundance of lifeguards I know normally I come to these meetings and I tell you, we're having a hard time mm -hmm. getting and maintaining lifeguards. Um, did not have that problem this year. Uh, we had four returning guards um, and three new guards. Uh, several of our, our veteran guards will be more, more than likely leaving us or giving us a lot less time uh, next season. So we were fortunate to pick up three new guards this year. They're young. Um, just at that. They're just barely made the age limit, um, so hopefully we'll have them around for a few more years. Uh, another overage that we experienced this year was recertifying everybody. We had to certify everyone. We weren't able to certify anybody last year. Um, we didn't have lifeguards on duty last year uh, because of the COVID, but so this year we actually had to recertify everybody. Um, those costs are now up over $400 a guard. Um, we don't anticipate having to recertify everybody every year, um, but this year, having done everyone, they're going to be up for recertification again in two years. Mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, and then we went over on uniforms as well. So I think our overages in the budget. They, they essentially, I think that they reflect our our personnel needs, and you know what we've been trying to put together for a budget over the last, I guess it's been like four or five years. We've been trying to develop this budget um, to include the park guard. Um, so, like I said, essentially everything is pretty much the same as last year. How they work out with the, uh, with, with the parking attendant? It's great. Um, we issued well over 150 resident decals this year. Um, mm -hmm. Visitor passes were huge. Uh, there's, there's a lot of confusion in town about 
who can actually go to the beach and you know people think that you know they all have to pile in one car or make multiple trips back and forth um, our parking lot is such that we can fill the parking lot and we still have some vacancy on the beach um, so we were able to issue a lot of visitor passes um, only a half a dozen season passes which I'd like to see some more of that uh, the season pass um, which is intended for our seasonal residents, um, you know, people that don't, uh, people that don't, they, they drive, a lot of people in town drive work trucks, mm -hmm. uh, vehicles that are registered elsewhere. Yep. So sometimes when we see a Massachusetts plate down there, it is your neighbor. Um, so just trying to make it easier for them and have that point of entry contact uh, with, the, with our patrons before they even get out of their car. Um, so they can get that sticker. They don't have to come see the lifeguards and bring their registration and back and forth mm -hmm. to the parking lot. So it worked out really well. They also helped out with the bathrooms, um, took that responsibility from the lifeguards, uh, policed the kayak path, and picked up the parking lot, picked up the trash in the parking lot as well as, as, well as anyone would, yep. I guess. Yeah. So I, th I think it worked out well, and I think that, uh, you know, I, I know that this is something that's going to be necessary um, going forward. Uh, I like having them around. It, it, honestly, it takes a lot of the weight off of my shoulders, too. Mm -hmm. um, not down there checking stickers and, and issuing notices for people to um, just to make them aware that they can get a sticker. Um, a lot of those... A lot of those minor issues were able to be dealt with, and when they weren't, it was simply a phone call, and I didn't, you know, I wasn't running down to the beach to take right. care of it. So, honestly, it did take a lot of weight off of my shoulders this season. Great. You have one or two people up there. We have one in the parking lot. We actually split that position among three people because it's a 56 hour a week. So, um, three people seems to actually work really well. Um, we didn't have any any real gaps in coverage. And then as far as lifeguards went, some people might have noticed that we did have, um, it may have seemed like there was an abundance of lifeguards at times. There were three lifeguards down there. Um, for the first couple of weeks, we had three on duty to train our newer lifeguards. Um, and then during swim lessons, we would have three guards so that we could have our swim instructors um, the ones that were teaching the lessons could be in the water and there could still be two guards. One of the problems that I'm having is um, it's really, it's, it's, we schedule for the entire season, right? But I don't know if Wednesday is going to be a rainy, miserable day and nobody's going to show up. Um, so sometimes we have three guards that are scheduled on a Wednesday. Um, you know, we, we pay them the rain pay, um, if it's raining but when there's those instances where there's just not a lot of traffic down there without having an on-site manager it kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to make that decision as to um, weather conditions uh, conditions on the beach how many patrons are in the park and to make that decision to maybe send one of those lifeguards home um, you know just to to play around with the personnel enough that we're not overstaffing Mm -hmm. right. um, so I th that's been a, a, a real challenge that I really experienced this year having a larger staff is not having that those boots on the ground somebody right there to make those decisions um, and I had a harder time being there as much this season um, just due to other commitments I, I had to make some money so um, I wasn't able to enjoy my summer at the beach as much mm -hmm. So that's something that we are exploring. We've we've tried to we've tried to put a, a lifeguard in charge, kind of give them like the head lifeguard title. Um, haven't really had much luck with that. Um, we have great employees, but they're they're young, um, and they just they, they don't know the the job in the park, and and you know they're not me, so I don't expect them to make those decisions. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that we're we're looking into as a commission when I can get everybody together to meet. Um, that's one of the topics that keeps coming up, and we're, you know, going to try and try and fix that in the future. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. like you got it covered. I'm trying. It was it was a challenge this year. It really, it was. Um, we're going to recommend a budget of thirty nine thousand nine seventy seven. So moved. 
Second. Any other questions for Travis? Yeah, the, um, were we looking to get a septic system up there or is? I did bring that. Um, unfortunately, I was only able to have one meeting with my commission this year. Um, I brought it up at that meeting and it was decided that the current system, which is very ecologically friendly, um, is, is working excellent. Oh, okay. um, there are some downsides to it. Um, you know, just the fact that it is a composting toilet. Um, but we felt that as long as we're able to keep it clean and it's functioning well and it's extremely low cost. Um, oh, so it's still working. I thought I yeah. heard it wasn't. That's why. No. Um, last year we had the bathrooms closed and it was, it just made more sense to try and clean the porta potties than to clean the entire bathrooms every, you know, as frequently as, as required. Um, we really haven't had any issues except for water. Um, we've had a, and, you know, we, <laughs> we've had our issues with the water. Mm -hmm. um, either we can't get a plumber in there in time for opening or um, we've had a couple of pipes that have gone. Um, but as long as the plumbing's working, the only other thing is um, I, I get to rake the holding tank every so often. <laughs> you actually have to move the stuff forward, but I've, I've had two babies and, you know, animals <laughs> and things. I'm not, I'm not that squeamish. I can still, I can still do that. And I, I don't have a problem doing that. Um, I would think that maybe if at some point I wasn't doing that, it might be kind of, you know, I might have to find somebody willing to do it, but it's not that bad. But I, I like the toilets the way they are. Um, we're going to continue to discuss things like that because the system is aging. Um, but when I talk to our representative from, from Clevis, he, he tells me everything's functioning great and that we're doing right. fine with it. So right. if, um, if I could, just one other thing. Um, I noticed Ray was talking about the, uh, the hole over in the parking lot in the library. We have a huge rut that's going down, um, going down our parking lot, basically. We've always had an erosion problem. Um, as you know, we've, we've had that project that my mother headed up over 20 years ago. Um, we are currently discussing, when we meet, we are currently discussing the uh, erosion issue. Um, but I think that, and I was in contact with Steve, I think, you know, we'll be able to do something before the season ends just to fill in those ruts so they don't turn into canyons. Yeah. Because what it's going to do is just funnel the water right right down there. We don't want the dirt in the lake. No. No, there's, uh, there's enough sand has been moved from the beach that uh, I want to stop it at the parking lot if at all possible. Um, so we are going to be... I'm going to meet with Steve again before the end of the season. Uh, one thing that I did last year was I put hay bales um, and just, you know, debris piles basically to block some of the, the runoff work great. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably do that again this year. But we've always had the question as to, so we need to, we need to maintain the parking lot. Um, should we be putting out to bid every couple of years to have somebody come in and dig out the swales um, and you know, top dress the parking lot? Um, or is that something that, you know, is covered someplace in, in the general budget that, that we could get some, like, I, I guess, routine attention? Because um, nobody's really done anything down there for a very long time. Yeah, but like grading the parking lot? Yeah, well, so the entrance and exit, they're supposed to be um, uh, like a, a crushed stone um, to allow the water to flow and not just drag the gravel down. Um, but that's all, that's all gone. It's, it's just dirt now. It's a big rut in the middle. Uh, a, lot, a lot of cars have a difficult time getting in and out. Um, and then the swales are, they're well designed. It's just they've, we go down with shovels every year and shovels and rakes and it's, it's not enough. Um, they've, they've just built up over the last 20 years to the point where we need, it would be better if we had like a routine um, visit, I guess, where you know, just maybe the highway department could check our top dress and grade things out for us. And you know, when our swales do get full after five or oh, why not, Deepford? 
Yeah, I, I think town that, property. Yeah. Can you check with Steve and crew and? Yeah, about availability. I know the last time I talked to him, he wanted to know what we had in the budget. And obviously, we don't have anything budgeted for things like that. We have a repair and maintenance budget, but we've never really... That would take a lot of the repair and maintenance budget. Um, that's one of the things that... Those tree removal that we had to get done this year, that was out of repair and maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't really have the budget for it. But yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to contact Steve and see what... Yeah, definitely, they could supply the machines. Yeah. Labor. And then as far as, you know, the, the, the gravel and, and things like that, you know, there is some money. Mm -hmm. As long as I don't overspend next year. Right. right. Yeah. Let us know how it goes. Okay. All right. I will definitely give you an update. Okay. Thanks, Travis. All, right. All in favor of the budget? Aye. 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 Unanimous, Fred. Right. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thanks for okay. coming in. Thank you. A oh, pleasure. A great update. Do we have minutes? No. no I don't yet. see them. <clears throat> We're going to skip over the outstanding minutes of 927 and go to the vouchers and payroll. We have accounts payable of $543,705.96. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a payroll manifest, gross payroll of $78,180.13 with a net payroll of $49,380.28. So moved. Second. Second by Cindy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous, John. We have nothing in the correspondence file, and we have what was this, John? The final representation of Plotik and Sanderson. Uh, that that's the representation letter of the audit that was completed for 2020 fiscal year. Do we need to just sign it, or do we need? That's one signature by, um, in this case, you this evening. Do we need a vote? Yes. So I'll make a motion to uh, accept the representation. Have the uh, chair sign on behalf of the board the representation letter that goes to Plodzik and Sanderson. Second. Second by Cindy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That ends the town administrator's report. Uh, one item tonight you have in your packets <coughs> the uh, draft cemetery deed. After um, discussion with the cemetery trustees at their last meeting, <clears throat> they're making the proposal to change the document name to right to inter. That has been uh, run by our town council and he agrees that that is a better terminology used by several other towns. I just need the board to approve that particular version before we start using it for uh, residents. What did it say before? Deed. Oh, deed, no. So instead of deed, it says inter? Right yes. To inter. Right to inter. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, format of the, uh, the form to right to inter. Second. Second by Cindy, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
unanimous. That was it for me this evening. Does the board members have any new or other business? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm going to be uh, providing testimony to the uh, the special committee on redistricting tomorrow night in uh, at uh, Brentwood at the Rockingham County Registry of Deeds, or actually courthouse, I should say. And I just had some. The they require that uh, we provide everyone who's providing testimony provide their testimony in writing prior to the actual uh, hearing. And uh, I just provided a copy of what I plan to say, and if anybody has any, any uh, corrections or revisions they'd like to see, that uh, please tell me so before noontime tomorrow so I can get a revision to them. And that's, that's it. That's it. I thought it was well, well mm -hmm. written. No, thank you. Anything else, Cindy, with you? No, I have nothing. Citizens' comments. Motion to uh, adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. 628, John. <laughs> <laughs>